So every now and again, a new plugin comes along that I know immediately that I want it. This is one of those. It's called Morph EQ by Minimal Audio. It is an EQ stroke auto filter stroke filter on steroids and then some. However, it's not really a surgical EQ. It's more about being creative and creating mad transitions between EQ shapes. Honestly, I've got to show you this one in action so you can understand why I bought it straight away. So there's a lot of things going on with this plugin. So I wanted to kind of keep this demo as easy and stripped back as possible. I basically got three loops in here. I got a kick, a top loop and some music in there. And I've grouped that all together and I'm going to put this Morph EQ on there. Now I say I bought this straight away because there is no trial version. But honestly, once I saw it in action, I knew I had to have it either which way. Now, most of the videos that I've seen that have gone through this plugin so far have gone straight for the presets and they're really impressive. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's also hard to understand if you're trying to get to grips with this plugin. So I'm actually going to start from blank and show you exactly how this works. So I'm going to put in a simple parameter on here. I'm going to double click on this white line and this adds a node to our EQ. Now this is set to a low shelf at the moment. I'm going to actually set this to a high pass. Now, if you're used to kind of even the basic of EQs, you will know that this is kind of cutting out the bottom end. So far, fairly simple EQ kind of stuff, but this is where it starts to get interesting. This little node that I put in here, the high pass filter at 30 Hertz, what I can actually do is if I go near to the node here, you'll see the little line around it just highlight and my mouse cursor changes. If I click and drag, this will now draw a path to a new node. For example, let's drop it around about here. This has created two different nodes, two different positions. So I've got position A and position B. And I can use this morph knob here to go between the two. Now what I can also do is if I go near this line in the middle here, if I click and drag, I can then bend it up and bend it down. So you can see what we're doing there is we're actually automating both the frequency and the resonance at the same time. But it doesn't have to stop there as well. You can add multiple points along that path as well just by double clicking. And then you can move these around. And again, you can change the line if you want to. And let's try the morph on that. It's pretty impressive stuff and a lot of fun to play around, but it doesn't stop there. We can actually add other paths to it as well. For example, I can put another node in up here, for example. And this has already made it a low pass filter. Let's keep it as a low pass filter. I can put that position in here. And then what I can do is I can do exactly the same thing. I can draw a path for that as well. Let's draw it to about the middle here. And now if we use the morph control, it does both of them at the same time. Kind of mad really. In fact, they're actually kind of crossing over. So I'm going to go back to the first one. You can see we can switch between the first and the second one here. I'm actually just going to adjust these to bring these back here maybe. And in fact, what I can do if I want to get rid of one of these points, I can click on them and I click on the delete icon here. I'm going to bring that to about here maybe. In fact, I'll delete this. We don't, we don't need that one as well. And then I'll switch over to the green one. That one's to here. Let's, uh, let's curve that as well. And let's try morphing that. <laughs> So 
So with that morph knob, we're essentially controlling two different filters, a low pass and a high pass filter, but we're also controlling both the frequency and the resonance of both, just with that one dial. Now there's also some more controls down the bottom here that actually control all of the points on the EQ at once. And they do some really interesting stuff. For example, we have the shift. It can shift your whole shape in one go. And then we have pinch. It kind of draws all your points together and pushes them all apart depending on kind of how you adjust it. My favorite one, however, is the spread. This kind of pushes things out wide. It almost separates the left and the right. It gives you a really interesting effect. And then finally, we've got the scale control, which basically allows you to increase and decrease the kind of scale of the EQ curve that you got above. Honestly, seeing this all in action made me want to buy it straight away, which is why literally I'm still playing around with it. If you want to know what everything does, though, there's a little question mark at the top here. If you activate that, it'll give you hints on every single knob and button and everything within the whole interface. Just makes it really easy to learn. So that really is the basics of setting the plugin up. But let's go through some of the presets because this is where it starts to get crazy. This is where you kind of see the extent of what this plugin can do. You know what, some of those presets are just crazy. There's so much you can do with this plugin. But I think even just going from scratch and creating your own filters is pretty amazing. For me, I knew that this was gonna be a plugin that was gonna be really handy. It's one of those tools that would be really great for dance music for breakdowns, for example. Yes, of course, you probably have all of this built into your door. For example, Ableton has the auto filter. You could probably stack up two, three of those and automate them with a macro. It's just setting all that stuff up. And I love the interface for this Morph EQ. It just makes sense. For example, you can see the timeline of where you want it to start and where you want it to end and where it kind of goes along the way. So you can even adjust that as you go. All that kind of stuff would be a real kind of fiddle to set up within Ableton or whichever plugin you're using. I and mean, that's kind of why I love this plugin because it just feels feels very unique and very creative and something that I can imagine myself using quite a lot. There is no trial, so you can't actually try it out. But for $50, I thought it was well worth the punt and just, just good to have in the collection in the toolbox to be able to do some really interesting stuff in breakdowns. So yeah, after playing around with it a little bit, I love it even more than when I first saw it. Right, 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 right now. I'm gonna bring it back to the funk. 